MyFantasySportsTalk.com. Well, it's time to move on to your mailbag questions and answer what you want to talk about. Talk about what you want to talk about. So the first one's going to come from Dylan Caves. You guys don't give enough love to Chi-Town. So tell me this. Who will the Bears take third overall? And if I may, here's a second question for you. Where do you have Jay Cutler ranked at QB? Is he a top QB option in today's NFL? Thanks, you'll help settle the debate between me and my friend. From Mike Ditka's illegitimate love child. That's a lot of information, Mr. Dylan Cades. Uh, Dan, what are the Bears going to do and show Chi-Town some love? Man, I don't know. I know we uh, we were talking about the 49ers last week and what they should do, and I had mentioned about possibly trading down. And if I was, uh, you know, in the Chicago front office, that would be my first thought. Um, just looking at the roster, uh, they need some help. Uh, they are not a very talented team. They have some pieces um, that are solid, but um, I would I would look for them to possibly trade down, recoup some more picks. Like I said last week with the 49ers, if you can get a, a, a haul like the Titans and Browns have gotten in the past, I can see see the Bears uh, jumping at that opportunity to to try and uh, uh, get a couple first round picks or maybe a first for next year, something something like that. Um, but if they do stay pat at third, um, a guy that I mentioned stock is falling, but I see him fitting on the uh, on the Bears roster is Jonathan Allen. Uh, the defensive end from Alabama. I know that might might hurt Brandon's heart because he wants him uh, on the Titans. But uh, looking at the at what the Bears have right now, I think Mitch Unrein is slated to be your starting uh, uh, defensive end, which uh, yeah, that's not a good thing. So uh, Jonathan Allen would definitely help bolster that. I think they got Leonard Floyd ninth overall in the first round last year, so they're definitely building a core uh, defense with that. And Jonathan Allen, if healthy, and I, I question his health because there are some reports out there of, of a shoulder injury like a Shaq Lawson of last year. So if healthy, he's, de- he's definitely worth the third overall selection. Um, he's got great technique. He's very versatile. He can play that 3-4-4-3 scheme. Um, he was the leader of that at Alabama defense that was honestly probably the best defense I've ever seen. That's, um, that, that's basically football. ultimately boils down to why I'm so high on him. Yeah. So, I mean, I've seen him manhandle guys in the SEC. Yep. And and he was looked up to by everybody on that defense, including the likes of Reuben Foster um, and different different players who are going to be first round picks in, in this draft as well. Uh, and he just never quits. He has a high mortar. And that's one thing that I love about him. Um, you know, you might question his size a little bit. Um, especially if you want him to play that 3-4. You know, he's only 291 pounds, 6-3. But, you know, with, with the, the type of athletic traits he has, I think he would be a solid option for the Bears at third. Um, but I looked at some mock drafts recently, um, going against what I usually do. And, I, I mean, it's weird to me, but I've seen quarterbacks go uh, to the Bears at third overall, which I just is mind-blowing to me. You just signed Mike Lennon. And, and these are mock drafts that were written a day or two ago on Chicago Bears sites like, uh, Bears uh, USA Today Newswire or something like that. So it's it's crazy that they have you know Trubisky or Deshaun Watson mocked to the Bears because that's just not going to happen in my eyes. I don't see it. Yeah, I've seen the Bears mocked all over the place. That's why it's so hard for me to get a read on this. So I basically just looked at their depth chart. Uh, now they did sign Prince Amukamara and Quentin Depps to help them. Uh, Depps, sorry, to help him kind of shore that um, that bad secondary. So and kind of help stop that bleeding in the defensive backfield. So I, I do like them probably taking a DB most likely because there's so much defensive depth in the early part of this first round or projected in the first round. Um, so, I mean, I've seen them projected to take uh, Jamal Adams, which I can't really disagree with that. Um, you know, maybe Marshawn Lattimore, I've seen that. Uh, Jonathan Allen, uh, Dan, it will scare you away from Jonathan Allen. And so that's ultimately why I probably went. Um, if I had, if I had to, I'd probably say Jamal Adams, you know, that playmaker from LSU, because I think some of his strengths could help um, the uh, the run game as well, as opposed to Jonathan Allen, because you you mentioned their uh, defensive line, Dan. It's not it's not real good. So it's bad. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they could use Jonathan Allen too. I just think, uh, you know, when you're kind of scaring me away from Jonathan Allen, I think uh, Jamal Adams is appears to be the higher talent as far as people what are people are projecting. 
So, and you can really use that position too. And like I said, he could help with the run game as well. You know, you mentioned in your draft profiles, you know, plays the run game really well, you know, hard hitter, you know, really good mm -hmm. oh, yeah. runner. So, um, I, I think, I mean, I don't know. I'm not going to go to the extremes of trading up, trading down that you are. I mean, I just don't know. I think they're, I really, I look at their depth chart. They do have a really good quarterback now. I really like Mike Glennon. I like their O-line a lot. Their receiving core is above average. They may want to add one more piece to that, but it's above average. Solid running game with a lot of good young backs. So um, I really look on the defensive side of the ball, period, uh, when I'm talking about the third pick for the Chicago Bears. So um, Jamal Adams, Jonathan Allen, think me and Dan are saying a lot of the same things. So Orlando, who do you think that Chi-Town should take third overall? Um, what was the guy's name who, who even sent the question? Dylan Cabes. Dylan, I, and a couple of shows before, I praised the Bears. I, I gave a lot of praise to Jordan Howard. I even had them I'm saying I put them behind the Packers going to the next season because I, the Vikings are still kind of a mess. Um, pretty pretty good uh, defense, but, you know, a little inconsistent. In, and we all know that the Lions could be pretty inconsistent as well. So, I mean, I praise the Bears on here quite a bit, but I could see them taking uh, Jonathan Allen. I mean, now they got Mike Glennon. I mean, that would be a pretty ideal move to, you know, go ahead and sit back and protect the guy. Or biting off what you said, Brandon, Jamal Adams. Uh, looking at last year, uh, the Bears got, you know, at home they played pretty good, but they got killed in the middle when they short passes and deep middle passes. And, I, you know, signing uh, the nine-year veteran and veteran Clinton Dems, um, I don't think it'll shy them away from taking a guy like Jamal Adams and, you know, with the third overall pick. And um, even if they don't take a guy like Jonathan Allen, um, right away. There's still a lot of depth for them to go grab some else, uh, later in the rounds. Um, I think Jamal Adams, uh, Jonathan Adams does make sense for them a lot, but if they were to get help in the middle of the field, uh, that makes perfectly sense as well too because the Bears got gutted a lot of the times um, in the past game when they had no one there. Well, you know, when Dems or when Dems couldn't, you know, do it by himself. So that's a move I could possibly see happening. Yep. I think we're all agreeing, Dylan, that the move probably needs to be on the defensive side of the ball. I really like what you got going on offensively. I really do. I looked at that depth chart and tried to find glaring weaknesses. You got a good offensive line. I like your receiving core. I think Mike Lennon will be good. Um, I don't know how good he will be, but I think he's above average right now, at least worth a shot. I think he'll be better than Brock Osweiler was last year in Houston, but he's also going to have a better offensive line to protect him as well. So, But the bottom line is we are sorry from the bottom of our hearts for neglecting Chi-Town on the show. Promise you, it's gonna be heavy bears from here on out. Uh, I don't Jackson. know about Kevin White though. I'll, I'll give him that. Uh, I don't know about this guy. Kevin if he can White. stay healthy, I know that's the thing. Um, he's still a name I want to give a chance though. Uh, but I do like their tight end. Their uh, what's it? Zach uh, Zach Miller? Zach Miller. I do like Zach Miller. Well, that's a lot. one. It's funny you mention that because that's one of the areas I think they need to shore up a little bit too. I would like a number two punch. I would like another punch from Zach Miller. Uh, to be honest with you, but yeah. He's not bad. He's not bad. So I'm, I'm not really concerned about the Bears offense, uh, to be honest with you. So hope that helps out. Dylan Caves, a.k.a. Mike Ditka's love child. Oh, are we answering the Jay Cutler part or is that for him? Oh, yeah. I forgot about part two. Well, I'll just tell you real quickly. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I don't know many starting. I mean, he's had his chance. and <laughs> Not many teams are biting. So as far as ranking him, I'd have to say uh, – 30, 31, 32, maybe there's two or three teams in the league that might give him a shot, so that will tell you. I think a, I think a team should have him on the roster this coming year, but uh, as far as ranking him, I don't know. I'm going to say probably like 30 to 38. Uh, Orlando, go ahead. Uh, I could see him around 21 to 25 around there. I mean, I definitely have James Winston, Mariota, a lot of those second-tier quarterbacks you know, ahead of him. As far as Jay Cutler again, too, I mean, you know, what's an ideal organization he lands on? Maybe the Jets, but I don't even know if they take a chance on him. They're, they might take a chance on a guy like Cutler. But other than that, it's kind of hard to see where, where uh, he'll fit in for a team that will give him a shot. I mean, if you ask me, I'll, I'll take a guy like Kaepernick over Cutler pretty much any day. So it's kind of hard to see where Cutler lands at the moment. Yeah, because uh, I agree with Kaepernick over Cutler for sure. I mean, that's almost a no-brainer, but no one's really biting on either guys right now. Uh, Dan, so part two of that question. 
Yeah, I mean, I think they asked if he's a top 20 option. I definitely don't see him as a top 20 option. Um, I don't think he's going to play again in the NFL. I think he's uh, he's set with his uh, reality star wife and, uh, you know, and their, their, his their butt children. His on Instagram. I don't know if y'all saw that. Today. Exactly. I, I say his butt shot is, has more chance of playing in the NFL than he does again. So uh, I, I think he's good. He's made his money. Um, he's put up his numbers, a lot of them interceptions. Um, but, you know, he was a solid quarterback. He was when he was in his prime, you know, solid. It's just you can't if you're not a leader, uh, you're not going to be able to be a successful NFL quarterback in terms of winning playoff games. Um, so I think that's his ultimate downfall. Um, I think a team would jump on him in a heartbeat over Kaepernick. I think Kaepernick's also done, too. You know, he's just getting blackballed. And I'm, uh, whether it's right or not, I think teams would look at uh, a guy who makes funky faces on the field rather than, you know, what, what Kaepernick brings. So um, both are backups at this point. Uh, neither are starting caliber in my eyes. So um, I think Cutler is going to kind of fade off into the sunset. You might see him in 25 years on a ranch movie. <laughs> Okay. I don't know. That's, yeah, that's pretty that's pretty Are you writing a script, Dan? I mean, that's maybe, that's pretty another remake of the Dallas TV show. I can see him on that. You know, flannel. You th- I think he'd look good in flannel. Well, I think that's Tony Romo, Jason Witten, right there. <laughs> who killed Witten? Um, who killed JW? Okay. Well, let's move on. Bonus coverage for you, Dylan Caves. Appreciate the question, man. For the full podcast, check us out on MyFantasySportsTalk.com, YouTube, iTunes, and SoundCloud.